Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be going over the solution to problem three from Leak Code Contest 76 entitled Find Eventual Safe States. So the problem states, in a directed graph, we start at some node and every turn walk along a directed edge of the graph. If we reach a node that is terminal, that is, it has no outgoing directed edges, we stop. Now say our starting node is eventually safe if and only if we must eventually walk to a terminal node. More specifically, there exists a natural number k so that for any choice of where to walk, we must have stopped at a terminal node in less than k steps. Which nodes are eventually safe is what the question is asking. Return them as an array in sorted order. And note that the, your graph will have at most uh, 10,000 nodes and uh, the number of edges won't exceed 32,000. So let's take a look at the example that Lee code provides us with. So here's our input and uh, this is the representation of our graph and basically means that each index represents a node and the uh, vector at that index is the uh, nodes that we can reach from that node. So for index zero, that means node zero, we can get to uh, node one and node two. We have directed edges pointing to those nodes. And then for node one, you can get to node two and node three, so on and so forth. And the answer for this should be that nodes two, four, five, and six are eventually safe. So here's a visual representation of our graph. You can see that you know from node zero, we can get to node one and we can get to node two. Um, so for those of you that don't know much about graph theory, uh, this is what's called a directed graph as mentioned in the problem. And spe specifically, it's a directed cyclic graph. So the cyclic is implicit, but basically what that means is that you can have cycles in your graph. So for instance, uh, here, if you start at zero, you can move to one, and then from one, you can move to three, and then from three, you can get back to zero. So this question is asking basically, which of your nodes are safe nodes that won't end up in cycles? So if we have node four here, we know that we can only ever go to node five, and that's that's a terminal node. Whereas if we start at node zero, you could technically infinitely go in a loop here, and you're never gonna end up at a terminal node. So another way of phrasing this question is, uh, given a graph with this representation, return all of the nodes that are not in cycles um, and, uh, and and so I'll leave links in the description for the wiki, wiki pages for both directed graphs and directed acyclic graphs if you want to read more about those but that's basically all we need to know in order to solve this problem so in order to do that we're gonna have two uh, sets unordered sets one called cycle nodes and one called safe nodes and we're basically gonna, we're basically going to perform a depth first search uh, on each of these nodes and as we uh, go through our depth first search anytime we reach a terminal node we're going to add that to safe nodes and anytime we uh, visit a node that's in our recursive uh, or recursion call stack that we've already visited we're no we know that's going to be a node in a cycle uh, and so at that point we are going to uh, put that in our uh, set of cycle nodes and if we do this uh, we'll get the correct solution so let's sort of walk through this so we're going to start at node zero and we're going to keep track you know okay at this point now we know we have visited node zero and then from there we're going to look at our first uh, sort of child node which will be node one at this point we'll, we enter you know our second call of our recursion uh, call stack and so now we visited node zero and node one from there we go to node two we keep track uh, like continually and at this point the only place from two that we can go is to node five so uh, we get to node five and we're going to recognize that this is a terminal node so at this point we are going to uh, add this to our safe nodes unordered set and so we know that this is a safe node and uh, in future sort of iterations of this if we ever reach node five we can just automatically return true so now we're going to pop off uh, you know one level in our call recursion call stack um, two can't go anywhere else so at that point we know that two is also safe so then we're gonna pop two off we're gonna come back to one so one we can also make it to three so now we're gonna uh, continue down our depth first search uh, and when we get to a uh, node three we then have a uh, one option to go back to node zero but at this point we know we've already visited node zero so now uh, we are going to add node zero to our cycle nodes and any node that is a parent of a cycle node we know by definition is also going to be a part of that cycle so we're going to pop off every single um, call in our recursion call stack and add those to our cycle nodes as well so next will be three we'll add that next will be one we'll add that and uh, then we get to zero which we've already added so at this point we're then gonna loop to our next node so when we when we start uh, from node one we're already gonna know that's a cycle node when we start from node two we're already we 
are already going to know that's a safe node and it's not until we get to node four that we have some more work to do so once we get to four uh, we're gonna you know recursively enter our DFS function but then immediately we're gonna see that five is a safe node so by definition we know that four is a safe node as well so we can add that and last but not least we'll get to six uh, which is also going to be a safe node. So that's basically our algorithm. So let's take a look at the code. So there's a lot going on here. So let's try and remove remove a few lines uh, to zoom in on what we actually want to look at. So at the top here, we just have a couple type aliases. VVI stands for a vector, a vector of integers. Uh, that's going to be our graph representation, just so that we don't need to keep on typing that. And USI stands for an unordered set of integers. And our cycle nodes and safe nodes are both the unordered set of integers. So let's remove that, and then we can sort of see this a bit more clearly. So. Let's look at the bottom function first. This is our eventual safe nodes. This is the uh, function that leak code gives us, and it takes a vector vector of integers graph, which is our representation of our graph. And then locally, we're going to declare our vector of integers answer, which we're going to return at the end of the day. And then we have this uh, unordered set of integers called visited nodes, which we are going to be passing by value so that each call is not going to be affected. We're not passing, passing it by reference. Um, and then for each node in our graph, we are basically going to call our DM DFS function pass in the graph by by const reference uh, pass in the index of the node and this empty unordered set at the moment and if at any point uh, this uh, DFS call for each node returns true we're going to add it to our uh, solution so let's take a look at the DFS function now so at the top here if at any point uh, we're looking taking a look at a node and we already find it in our safe nodes we can just return true automatically because that means in a previous node uh, we already visited this node so we don't need to do extra work for it again similarly if we find it in the cycle nodes uh, we want to return false because we already know that this node is in a cycle and uh, then while we're doing our recursion uh, our DFS recursively uh, if at any point when we're passing this visited nodes in we check I and it's already in this visited nodes then we want to insert that node into our cycles and return false because we at this point have de determined that this node is in a cycle um, if this isn't the case, that means that we haven't determined we're in a cycle yet, so we want to insert that node, which is at index i, into our visited nodes. And then here is the main part of our sort of recursive DFS. For each of the children nodes, or the nodes that we can get to via directed edge, we are going to once again call the DFS uh, with this node. So we're just using a range-based for loop to loop through each of the uh, nodes that are uh, we can get to via directed edges, pass the graph in as well and then uh, pass in this updated visited nodes once again, once again by value not by reference because we don't want to have the lower uh, calls in our recursion call stack affecting the higher ones and if this function at any point returns false um, either by uh, this condition or this condition we know that sort of we found that a, a child node uh, in this graph is in a cycle and therefore the parent must be as well so we want to ins insert uh, that node the parent node i into our cycle nodes as well and then return false and if we can get through all the children without ever returning false we know that it's a safe node so at that point we insert our current node i into safe nodes and we return true and this will get you the correct answer um, and so the last thing is to talk about the time complexity. It sometimes is difficult with recursive uh, recursive functions, uh, but because we know we're only ever visiting each node once and doing work uh, recursively for that uh, node once, this is actually just a linear time complexity. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.